Good morning, everyone, once again. Um, I'm so grateful to our heavenly parents and to our true parents. And I'm also grateful for each one of you here because you can let me stand here and talk with you. Um, yeah, the sermon title is we can read Heavenly Parents Lineage. Yeah, there are so many things to talk about it, but I'll try to be very, very um, short and precise because of <coughs> most of the time we check our watch. Um, before I start, I wanted just to say something about uh, what it has been said during the announcement. Uh, I remember when I joined the unification movement, uh, it has been said to us that we have to read this book, you know that? This book, 70 times. You remember that for one who are senior here? 70 times we have to read this book. Oh, I, I know that uh, at that time we didn't have much of this book in the center. It was just reserved for the one who uh, was trained in the 21 days or 40 days seminar. So they had the one who could go to the mission and open uh, other churches. But I remember also one of the brother at that time, because he didn't have this book and he wanted really to have it with him, he buy a notebook and starting to copy from one book to his notebook. Can you do that today? Yeah, he has to copy it because he didn't have it. He has to copy it with his notebook. Unfortunately, we know I tried to read more than seven times but until now, I did not yet reach the 70. I'm sorry. But uh, uh, for especially for the young generation, uh, I think it will be a good experience to start reading this book. Even, yeah, even if you can start where you will stop, it will be okay. But what I can say, I will suggest to you, don't read it as a novel. You know the novel you see in the bus or in the train station, people are reading books. They can read books, very huge amount of page. But this is not the case when we read this book. When you read it, you start in one page, two page, you're starting maybe two, to sleep. Yeah, it happened. And then you have to start reading again. So it will be very, very a good experience to start reading it, but read the book of God with God himself. Don't read it by yourself, otherwise you can't understand the content. Difficult to understand the content if you read it just for the desire to read. That's very, very, it will be very, very difficult. Please. Okay, my, uh, because we have now to use glasses, this age. Yes, um, the heavenly parents' lineage. But with this one, I cannot see you, so. <laughs> so um, I have to be, we, uh, to see you and to look at this, uh, it's more, it, <laughs> yeah, now I can see you, but yeah, yeah. And then I have to be like this to, to read. <laughs> yeah, it's an experience of life. Uh, so, heavenly parents' lineage. Uh, what do you think? Uh, the population of the world today is almost about 8 billion people. Huh? Uh, among those 8 billion people, uh, maybe how many people who are believing in God? We have a Christian faith, we have the Buddhist, we have a Hindu, and we have other things, Muslim, yeah? How many people are believing in God? Half? 
Half of, I don't know. It's just for us to, to remember. And among all those who are believing in God, uh, are there some who can claim that I'm a descendant of God? Is there between the believers or the one who believe in God, they can claim, I am the descendant of God. I am the son of God. How many? No, many, how many? Yeah. And if there is none, can we have this desire to be so? To be the candidate? This is the very big question that we have to ask ourselves. Can I be the candidate to become son and daughter of God? Or I want just to be a servant of God. What do the servant do if he is in front of his master? What does the servant do? We know? Yeah, we have to think about it. Uh, 2,000 years ago from now, uh, there was one person, Jesus Christ. And uh, before he was born, it was announced to some people that he is the one that he will be called the son of God. And you know what happened to him? Since Jesus was a baby, what happened to him, Jesus? Someone already plot to, to kill him. So it's dangerous to be a son of God in this world. Yeah, it's very dangerous. Because if you say, I am the son of God in the road when we, we go out here, you think people will believe in you? They will say, maybe you have something starting in your, your head. Yeah. They will think like that. There's something abnormal in you. But 2,000 years ago, a baby child was born, and he didn't even know that he was the son of God. And the one who wanted to plot to kill him, uh, who was him? He's a big king, a power, a powerful man. The name was Herod, huh? the king Herod. He has all the nation of Judea, Israel at that time, under his control. You see? And Jesus was just a small baby without any protection. No one could protect him. Huh? Only God who intervened to let him flee to Egypt. We know that story. And after he has, yeah, a certain age, he came back. Um, and uh, he can remember the story uh, through the Bible, I say. And what is very important here that Jesus was always, most of his time, in the temple. I can say that because he wanted to study the scripture at the time. Why he wanted to study the scripture at that time? Because he wanted to understand huh, who God is, the history of God. And finally, he discovered that he was one of his sons. Yeah. He discovered that he was one of his sons. By discovering that, he also discovered that the God that all the people are worshipped is really in a very difficult situation. And all his fellow men, brothers and sisters around him, they didn't understand the situation of God. But he tried how he can then stand and help his father God that he can also have the ability for others to understand the same situation as himself was also in a experiencing. Was it easy? No. It wasn't easy. As we know, Jesus, as the reading that we have this morning, um, Jesus was trying to explain to the 
leader of the church in the temple, the elders, the one who was able to uh, say to the multitude and then people will follow. No? He tried to explain them about his mission, how about his desire, about God. But those people who was the elite in the society, they were not able to understand. Even if they could understand, discretion maybe, but they was reluctant. Ah, can we follow this man? As you can see all the conversation through that story. Maybe they knew what Jesus was talking about, but they say, ah, can we really follow this man? First, they were asking, they were ask, who is he? Where did he come from? Who are his parents? Look at him, what he's wearing. Oh, who is following him? Who is at his back? All these kind of things, by reasoning, they say, ah, he's not one of us. As we are scribe, Pharisee, huh? we know the scripture, many things, and people respect us. Huh? If I say something, people follow. But him, yes, what he's saying is true, but there is always a but. That but today, by understanding the divine principle, what can we say? What was blocking them to follow Jesus? No, by understanding the divine principle today, what can we say was blocking these people to follow Jesus? Huh? Sorry? Yeah. That's the word, the falling nature. But they didn't know that they have falling nature. They didn't know. As we know, falling nature. But imagine all this... Eight billion people in the world. Do they know that they have falling nature? No. They just know that, okay, to be bad, it's okay. I can, be, I can make a mistake and then repent. That's it. This is all what they know. They don't know that this falling nature is a broken stump for them to even to find something good, to see good in others. They don't know that. Even us who knows that situation, we know how difficult it is. How difficult it is. So the situation went until the result that Jesus was telling them. And they didn't even ask him, who is your father? Huh? As I can start, read again, just to remind you. Uh, I have my, uh, what, uh, this is a, uh, um, what do you call it? Version same? King James, King James version, yeah. But uh, uh, sorry, uh, I used to read my French one, the Louis II, of course. This is an English one, English one. And if you can hear some of my pronunciation is not on the right English way, you understand that I'm not really in the way to uh, consider uh, English. Uh, I'm not in the way to speak uh, in the proper uh, language that you can understand properly, sorry. Uh, I say it here. Uh, and you shall, know, sh you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is about 32. We didn't read it here. The answer to him, we are Abraham's descendant, and we have never been a bondage. No, we have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say, you will be free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Slave of sin. And I know that you are Abram's descendant, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do not. You do what you have seen with your father. They answer and say to him, Abram is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abram's children, 
you would do the work of Abram, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard, I heard from God. Abram did not do this. You do the deed of your father. Then they say to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. Hmm? Yes. If God, hmm? yeah. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed for and came from God. Nor have I came of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, when he speaks a liar, he speaks from his own resources. I like that version he said that, he speak his native language. <laughs> the native language. The native language is why? Is lie. Lie means the truth is there. What you do? You take one word of that truth, it becomes what? A lie. If the truth is given, you just twist it, it is not anymore the truth. And in our society, we have so many people who are specialized in doing that. We know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I give you one example? If you are walking in the road, you see uh, suddenly your pockets are empty. And then you, by walking, you see a 50 pound note on the road. What you will see? What you will do? <laughs> a 50 pounds on the note. You have nothing, and you know that, oh, there is energy bills to, peel, to pay, and so many problems now. 50 notes on the road. What will be your attitude first? And you see, in this kind of situation, people have a strong reflex, ref, reflex to distinguish between a plain pepper and a 50-pound note. Isn't it? Yeah. The reflex is very, very strong because you are in, in need. Huh? You can distinguish between a pepper and a 50-pound or 20-pound note. But... While you are walking, you say, hey, directly say, Do you didn't see that 50 pound note? Oh. You stop. And before picking up, what you will do? <laughs> what you will do? <laughs> Psychology, it must belong to, to you. So you see, oh, it's around someone, maybe you have dropped it. Because you know that is not belong to, to you. Someone have dropped it. You will look around. Huh? If the person who dropped it, maybe is, is coming back to get it, and say, oh, there is no one. And you also you look around, you see if someone is looking at, at you. Why? Because inside, you can remember that it's not something belongs to you. And if you pick it up, you put it in your pocket, what you will do? You will run. You will walk very fast. Because you don't want the person who dropped it come and then ask, oh, yeah, have you seen uh, 20? I, I saw it. Uh, no, no, no. It's not. The native language of a human being is also how to, to get rid of any witnessing which can prove that you have done something wrong. We can observe as society we will see this nature and even embedded in each one of us. See? So, in this account of the story of Jesus, there is two things that we can find that are very important. Jesus revealed to us that there is two, we have two sources as a human being. There is two fathers. Okay? Jesus tells to other people, your father is the, the devil. But my father is different eh, from your father. That is very important that we have, something that we have to notice. To father, this is the reality of what we are today. We are caught between 
two different forces. The evil and the good. That's the reality. If we don't accept that reality, it will be difficult for us to make a move to change. Difficult. We have first to accept that reality and then decide that, okay, because I'm in this situation, now I have to move from one side or another. That make us also to understand that human being, as we are, we can make things go for the better or for the, the worst. It depends on what? What we decide, what we have in our mind, and all that we can do every day, our everyday life, our lifestyle, lifestyle. See? We can make things change if we really we want. If really we decide, I say from now on, ah, no, I have to behave like this. And if we start believing that and walking toward that way, we will see things will start to, to change. For those who are, most of the young who are study uh, chemistry or I think, they, you know the molecule, the molecule, this yeah? molecule, uh, what is the molecule is composed of? There is a new Nucleus and the elect uh, eh? electron. electron. Wow, yes, electron. Uh, what if the nucleus is uh, what? Okay, severe shock. Uh, it's uh, move from this place as a center. What will happen to the atom? You know? Sorry. The nucleus is moved from a center. What will happen? The atom will not be any more atom. It will be completely deformed. Huh? Yeah, deformed. So the center of the universe, the center of our life, we have always to remember if that center is moved or is uh, uh, damage, even the things around it also is affected. Isn't it? Yeah. So the world we are seeing today with all the struggle, people are evil. We can say, ah, the world is very bad, but who are living in this world? Who is living there? Us. It's not the world who is bad, it's me who is bad. So if I'm starting to change, I starting to transform myself, the world also will be do what? Because I am in the center, all the electron will also fit in that direction, and they will revolve around the, the center. This is what the principle teaches, and also what Father say in that reading, that I ask God what is really the center of the universe. And they say that is the relationship between God and the human. The human has to be in the center, and God is the internal center of human being. So if we take God from us, who has to be the center, we become also destabilized. And ourselves, if we move from our center without fulfilling what we should do, things will go worse. Yeah. A simple principle in the universe that we have to ask. And something else in the divine principle introduction in the chapter one, it says, if we want to solve the problem, fundamental problem of the universe, we have to first know the, nat the nature of God. Yeah. The center. The science today, to solve many problems, they use formula, principle, and law. But unfortunately, in churches or religion, they don't use formula. That's why most of the churches who existed until now, except maybe unification, except, I say, except the unification movement, there is a formula for one person who is a bad person to become a good person. Do we know that? In other churches, you know, you have to have faith in God. That's it. If you have faith, 
You have to believe. But this is not a way for human transfer, transformation. Transformation. We have a formula, course, which we can study if we want, which can bring us from one state to a, another. 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 Okay? That's very important. If we talk about the lineage today, as I say, uh, there are so many things to say that, but what I will add one more, two more things is, what do we understand by the lineage? Simply, by the lineage. If we talk about lineage, what does it mean? Sorry? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are the continuation or the expression of the one who gave us birth. Well, I can say that. I don't want to take the dictionary definition. I want just for us to understand what us we understand, if we can uh, see about that. We are, I am the extension of my pa parents who most of them already dead, but the visible one of their name is me. This is how I can understand the lineage. What about God? God also have the desire to manifest himself through a human being. This is what the creation was about. He wanted to be, to have a form he wants us to be visible. Visible. But for God to be visible, he needed a mechanism which can allow him from what he is to go through and then become visible. You see? According to the science, it takes 30 billion years since the universe began. We, we are not sure about that, but this is what the science did. Because, uh, yeah, 30 billion years. Imagine for 30 billion years if we follow that science, for him to have Adam as a human being, yeah? for most of our elder sister or sister here, if you are 30 million a day, a years I'm pregnant. Can you support that? Your pregnancy is for, you have 30 million years until your baby will reach maturity. Can you support that? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. And during all these 30 million, according to the science, many things was going on. To create the environment, the cosmos, uh, and the planet Earth today, where life can be sustainable. 30 million years. I think it was more than that. But one day we will discover it. So the lineage is the extension of God. But as I say, if we want to understand deeply how the lineage can be, the lineage of God can be, I think we have to go back to the Bible. The Bible can teach us something new. Uh, in the Bible, in the receipt of Genesis, it says that God created man in his e image. In his image, he created, he created who? He created him. This is what he said. And then he said, he created man and woman, he created them. And if you go to the verse 2, it says that, is it says that, I want to, want to read for more time, that God created man and then he created all the beasts in the field. Huh? And he bring them to before man and he asked them to give the name. Do you know that receipt in the Bible? Yeah, he gave the name. Who was giving the name of the all the beasts? You think it's Adam? Huh? Yeah, let's say it's Adam who was giving the name, oh, you, you will be called lion. You, uh, this, you think, how many beasts, how many things God created in the universe? Billion of things. 
from the insects to the things that even we cannot see. But he said that it is, it is reported that God brings all the things in front of our eye that he can give the, the name. But it's also saying in chapter 2 that but he, Adam did not find someone who was similar to, to him. He needed what? A helper. This is what the Bible says. He needed help. So what God said, oh, after bringing all the beasts in front of Adam, Adam said, oh, I'm not satisfied. I need a helper. Uh, last time, I think my elder brother he said, in the Jews, they, they call uh, the, husband, the wife who? Uh, the Lord. The Lord. Lord, the Lord. It's the same as uh, when Sarah was calling Abraham, my Lord. Huh? What does it mean, helper? What do we mean? What do we understand by this word helper? If they care, someone will help you to do what? Huh? Adam needed a helper. But I think if we understand that way, it's also okay. But let me bring another understanding of that passage, passage biblical passage. In the Chapter 2, when God was telling to Ab uh, Adam to, to name all the beasts, and in reality, in my understanding, God, he was talking to himself. He was talking to himself by seeing the image of Adam. When you, it's like your father, you are waiting for your baby to be born, you say, ah, when he will grow, I will do this for him. I will bring him to the park. I will show him how to do this. All this enjoyment, God was talking to him himself. This is my understanding. And then, finally, he said, after creating everything, I need a helper. Someone who can make me become a real visible person. Are you following me? Yes. yes. And then, at that time, what God did, he take one rib from Adam, and he make Eve a woman. A woman. What does it mean? According to my understanding of the principle, the object that God was looking for is the object which can be which can have the same essence as himself, but different from him, with the same purpose that if they are united, they can bring about a life, a substantial life. Do you mean? Do you follow what I say? I say, I repeat it. God, the object that he was looking he wanted an object which has the same essence as himself, but different from him. But different, same essence, but with the same purpose, which when they are united, centered on that purpose, they can fulfill something great which will be the extension of himself as God will become a substantial being. Okay? That's why the object of that particular mission become very, very impo important. So who can make God to become a visible God? Is it Adam? Is Eve? is the wife, Eve. Eve is the substantial object who can bring God, the law, who is invisible, to become a life and a living God. That's the time that the lineage of God can be shown and become extended out of himself. Do you understand what I say? Yeah. So Eve becomes very, very important to God. That's why I think in the Bible, it says that it was the last creation. creation. Of course, this is the way I understand it. Uh, 
God in the second chapter was talking to himself. Yeah. That means the fundamental way of the lineage, the roots of the lineage can really be accomplished through a wife. Without a wife, there is no lineage. No lineage. No lineage. Why? Because the wife is the object which is different from, but with the same purpose. We have the same essence, isn't it? Yeah, the same essence. And if we are united with one purpose, we can bring about a new life and a new joy will expand, expand. The more the joy will become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger because through the lineage, we will see that God is multiplying. At the same time, he's maintaining his own ident identity. And this identity to, to maintain and to multiply. By when it's multiplied, it's becoming better or worse? Better and better and better and better. See? Through the lineage. Look at the woman. Where is the secret chamber where everything is grown? Yeah. The womb is there where the creation of the substantial God can be manifest. And when it's done, a baby is bo born. Who is the baby? Is the lineage. See? The lineage. Is the the world become flesh. The world become flesh. You see, then we can show the value of the woman. If there is no woman, there is no lineage. No lineage. No lineage. And God cannot have his extension manifest outside. He will be always being invi invisible. Invisible. And the story tells us when Adam and Eve fell, God was left completely devastated. Why? Because he couldn't be seen anymore. Everyone can claim that he is God. And the Bible report ex ex expressing that. There were many gods. Huh? Everyone would say, I'm God. I'm God. God of this. God of that. But who is the true God? No one knew. Except when Abraham, we know, he discovered, I'm not, I don't want this God. I want to discover the true God. Abraham bring back the true God. So that means he, he, he fixed a little bit the, the direction. See? It, it was just the beginning. It was just the beginning. And in the inner desire of Abram, what was, what was his, his burning desire? Abram was to have a, a child. That means Abram meets the same expectation as God. See? That's why he was looking for the true God. See? He blessed them. Was it easy for him? No. Not easy. So, when we talk about the lineage, I think we have to remember that. Yeah? Remember that. Without a mother, there is no lineage. And God cannot become a true God. Yeah? When the child is born, the, the man changed completely his statue. From, become, from being a simple man, you become who? Huh? A father. That means you are there, but you have changed completely. Not because you change as, I don't know, but your state you change. Yeah? Internally and also, but not only externally, because you still like you are, but internally, the quality the value of your internal life change because you become a father. Yeah. And imagine that father 
you have many children. The children of children. From the parents, father, parents, grandparents, you see? All the time, the statue of God is, what, is doing what? It's transforming. See? So we are living in an age where, first, of course, Jesus called God Father, which was not uh, say before. And today we are living in an age where we discover that God is not only a father, he's also a, a mother. Why? Because, not because it's just something come like that, because there have been a progress. There have been something new. Huh? There have been, God has found a true daughter for the first time since he lost Eve. He has found a true daughter, a true wife, and a true ma mother. We are living in the age of the mothers. When the mothers appear, the lineage of God can also appear. Yeah, appear. By receiving, by being nurtured by the mother's milk and word, that's the time we become, we will become a true children. True children. Without that, it's difficult. Difficult. The Father God cannot recognize us as his children if the mother did not approve our growth. Huh? He will say, ah, this is really, he is like his fa father. Ah! Why? Because you have gone through a process which the mother recognized you as the image of your father. Who knows your father better? Huh? It's your mom, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, we have to know that when we talk about the lineage of our heavenly parents, uh, it's very, very important to notice that without our true mother, without us, as human being, even we are born again, yeah? If we are not one heart, one mind, with our true mother, it will be difficult for true mother to say, with all her heart, this is my son and this is my, my daughter. Yeah. True mother once said that a woman is weak, but a mother is you, a sister or mother. You know that word that two mothers say? A woman, a woman is weak, but a mother is strong. Yes. But how can a mother be strong? If he can support his, if he can be supported by his children. Not the baby, but the grown-up children. Isn't it? Yeah, if the mother stand eh, behind him, he see, the people see that he has a grown-up voice and girls, the mother will say, oh, I'm secure. And people will be, oh, you cannot touch. That's the mother of peace. Mother of the universe. Yes. Mother. I think uh, we have to remember that. That's the reason that uh, we can talk today about the lineage of heavenly parents. Uh, I will finish with this conclusion. Why we have to talk precisely about the heavenly parents' lineage? First is because to challenge, the challenge that we will have ahead of us, it will be very, very difficult and very, very strong. What do I mean by that? The power of darkness that is now covering our universe, our world, is very, very strong. 
if we are not aware of it, it can cover all up, cover all up. Huh? And we can be absorbed by that power. Huh? Falsehood theory, immorality. Huh? Huh? We know that the communism that two fathers fought years ago is coming back. Yeah? And they are coming back with another statue. They have power. They have money. How can we defeat that? And they are selling their own way of society. They say, look at us. We don't believe in God, but we are progressing. Isn't it? Yeah, we are fine. We have order in our nation. Why don't you accept us? Huh? Yeah. Why don't you accept us? Huh? We can see what is happening in our society. Huh? The ideology of Humanism is really destroying families. Now we have family in a different way. People are partner of any kind. And they say, oh, you are not taking care of my, your children. Maybe I can take off the children, even if you are not a good parent. Me, I can be a good parent. We can see that in our society with all this current that we know, I don't want to say it here, but I think we know, the anti-value. All the value are completely today corrupted. See? We don't know even what is wrong, what is good. It's everything is getting confused. Yeah? Confused. You can defend one good idea, but if around the many people are not agree with that, that good idea will never be. It will be just uh, kick or destroy. Yeah. Imagine if we have a good idea in the environment which is full of anti-good idea. What we will do? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And they say the law of majority, isn't it? Yeah, majority. I say, oh, I'm a good man. I'm a prayerful person. But around you, there are so many people who don't care about God. You think you can survive? No, you cannot. Unless the number starting to multiply with the same idea. Then you can stand and survive. I'm out of time. <laughs> uh, we, are, we have to face the challenge ahead of us. And imagine the force of darkness. Today it's difficult to prove. If you do something wrong, people will say, oh, before praying guilty, you have to show heavy, the evidence. But if there is no evidence, that means I'm, I'm free. And all the criminals, what now they have in mind that if I do something wrong, I have to absolutely erase all the heavy, the trace. How you will find the evidence which has been burned in the ashes if we don't have God's spirit, God's lineage? It will be difficult. See? Difficult. That's something important. Hmm? We have also to protect our lineage. The seed of true life, true life that we receive through our rebirth needs to be pro. Protected. Protected from what? From bad influence. Okay? We know that Jesus was born. Already someone wanted to, to kill him. Yeah. yeah. We have to protect the seed of love, the seed of true life that we receive as a blessed family. Okay? We have to fight against our falling nature. Because the sin is gone, but the falling nature still, still remain. Still remain. Most of the time we don't talk about it, but it still remain. The falling nature. Bad habit. A bad behavior and lifestyle. Everyone has his lifestyle. You say, don't care about me. If you, 
I respect you, you respect me. What does it mean? That means that he has his own life that you, you cannot inter- interfere. Yeah. We talk about the lineage because also the idea of God where the idea of God which is one family under God can only be realized if we are in one line, blood line. If we have a different line, blood line, it will be difficult to realize one family under, under God. Difficult. Okay. The world of interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universal value, I think, uh, mostly for our young, we have to know how to defend it. But you can defend this world, this idea, he only if you are in the God's lineage. You have the strength and you have the ability to face the power of darkness. The power of darkness is spiritual. It's not only physical with atomic bomb, but it's also spiritual. Yeah. Mm. And also, we're talking about lineage today, is to go to give glory to our true mother. We can claim for her. <laughs> yes. We have his children. We have to give her glory. Okay. That's why if we see that, we, we recognize that I am the son of true mother, please give her glory, respect. Yeah. And also in Roman, it says that the creation is looking for the appearance of the sons and daughters of God so that they can feel at peace. See? The center, the true master, the true master. Yeah. We're talking about the lineage, heavenly parents' lineage, because we want to be totally liberated from Satan totally liberated from Satan. We say in our family pledge that we seek for freedom, eternal yeah? good. We have to be liberated from the influence of Satan and also the influence of sin. Okay? With our falling nature, we can come back to sin again if we don't care, if we don't really take it seriously. So I think uh, by knowing that the lineage is very important as we have to belong to the lineage of God, only godly people will face the challenge who are coming ahead. If we have only faith and we only believe, we will never face the challenge who are coming ahead. We have to become a godly children with a clean blood, a clean blood, that means a blood which originated from the source of the lineage which, who is God. If we don't have that clean and pure blood, it will be difficult to face the force of darkness. Difficult, difficult. Um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, please, we have to have this desire to become sons and daughters of our heavenly pa- parents. Yeah. Hey, I can have the last slide, please. Then we can read it. Do you know what was pain God's heart, causing him the greatest grief over the long story since the fall of Adam and Eve? God lost his lineage. And with the loss of his lineage, God lost his right of ownership. Understand? He lost his right of ownership. See? Ownership gone. That's why it's not strange to see that this world was created by God, but the one who's ruling this world is not God. We know that. Yes, he's not God. He lost the right of ownership. Because we let God to lost his ownership. Okay. Let me talk about lineage for a moment. Lineage is more important than life and more important than love. 
life and love come together, life and love come together to create a lineage. Lineage cannot be established if either life or love is missing. Missing. Therefore, among the three qualities that define the parent-child relationship, love, life, and lineage, lineage is the, the fourth. It's more important. Okay. If the lineage of God is multiplied in number and in quality, this world will completely be tra transformed. But if there is no much number, the number and the quality is low, we cannot expect to realize a world of peace. A world where everyone can feel we are brothers eh? and sisters. Let's pray. Heavenly parents, we are so grateful that we can call you our heavenly parents. Not because of what we have discovered or what we have done, which can be worthy to be called your sons and daughters, but it's because of our true parents' foundation. The true parents have gone the way of tears, sweat, blood, to reconfort your heart who was broken when you lose your children. And they have walked that path in research how they can bring back their brothers and sisters back to you as we are today. That's the reason we can call you our heavenly parents. Please, heavenly parents, guide us to really starting to feel and to behave like your children, to overcome all sorts of obstacles, barriers, and difficulty of this world. We know that it's not only a physical barrier or physical obstacle, but the power of darkness which has been established is become a system of thought. It's becoming ideology. It's becoming a system of power. It's becoming all sorts of things that can control our spirit because we are death. All that power of darkness is facing us the years to come. We don't know when, but we know that our true parents are always guiding us in the way to prepare our heart and mind for that moment. Heavenly parents, as I was standing here before your children and all that I was able to express, I would like to repent for not be clear enough, for not be precise enough that many of your children maybe cannot understand. Please add one is missing to them and that they can really feel that your desire is to feel that we are your children and we have to belong to your lineage to become completely pure without any shadow, any stain of evil, any mind of evil, any kind. Our heart to be completely purified as Jesus say, bless those who can have a, a pure heart, they can see God. Please, Heavenly Parents, guide each one of us that we can start to remember that we came from you and we have to return to you to the process that you have established as now we are living in the time where our true mother 
your only begotten daughter, the substantial Holy Spirit, is standing before this world to proclaim the ideal world. At the same time, is building a new world where each one of your children can feel free, liberated, and able to feel that we are all brothers and sisters. Please, we pray that you can protect our true mother and give her strength, as also that she can always be healthy in the way of this heart, which is very difficult. And please, Heavenly Parents, we would like to promise to do more for that cause. Help us and let that the spirit of our true Father, the spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit of all saints and sage, our elder brother, Hunjinin, and all those who are before us can really guide us and inspire each one of us throughout this journey. I offer and I pray in the name of every one of you here, every one of us here, and in my name, Morris Dindi. Bless Sancho, our family. Adieu. Thank you.